uh, many years in terms of self-study. But I, I was particularly inspired by uh, Donald Schoen's uh, request that we develop a new epistemology in 1995. So what I've been focusing on is um, this idea that we need a very different way of thinking about self-study, which is very um, challenges in a way, the, the dominant uh, <coughs> research university, which is what Schoen said. And so what I've been focusing on are multimedia <coughs> forms of representation. And what I'd really love to talk about um, today are the, the kinds of work I've been doing with uh, my own master students. Um, using this kind of multimedia um, representation that a couple of weeks last Tuesday I asked all my group if they would talk about what really mattered to them. And then I put it together in this kind of Sky News format. And I've got, got the connection where I can actually click on one of those um, and they will actually come up and talk. I can go back and I'm just a member of that group. And you can hear me expressing the they say ontological values. And these are the values that I try to live as fully as I can in my practice. And I'm trying to build up this form of representation, which seems to me to get much closer in a, in a living way to the meanings and the issues that people are actually exploring. But the crucial thing is this move from the text-based work in our traditional journals to a way of representing. For example, as I'm standing with you in the here and now, the energy that I feel, and I know as we get into this, and we start to talk with each other, that you will be evoking in me a passion for education that actually matters in terms of how I explain what I do. And so even now, as I'm, and I begin to get excited about the thought of us talking together, the energy is flowing through my body, my values, and I really do love what I do in education. And yet, if you ask where does love come as a standard of judgment in the academy, it's hardly there. And I was very pleased that one of the first doctorates went through this last year with the title Love at Work at the University of Bath. I put that on the website. And you can access this material uh, that I've put up here. All you need to do, most of you will know that uh, website, and some of you will anyway, I think, uh, where you can just go and um, access uh, this paper in the, the top uh, right hand corner of actionresearch.net. You'll just be able to click on that and you get the paper and this multimedia representation that you can then download because all of the images that I put in my paper are actually are video clips on YouTube, stream server that you can actually immediately access connected into the visual narrative. I hope that gives you just a flavor of what I'd like to talk about. Okay, thanks. All right, so um, each of the five presenters then has given you a, a bit of a brief introduction to the something that you're interested in. But, so let me just open it up like that and say, look, is there anything that you're feeling that you'd like to, you know, explore with me about what I was just saying um, before I actually say anything? So is there anything that you've come with an interest? To well, I'm very interested in the visual representation as the text. Okay. Um, I very much. Okay. Any other? Yes, uh, that was the same thought I had because we are doing a lot of distance education at my, uni my university, is the Iceland University of Education, and uh, we have students spread all around the country. So in our distance education, we, we use our video a lot. But I thought the way you are using it was very interesting. Okay, I'll, what I'll do is when that group have finished with their OHP, um, I'll just go and just show you how I've actually put these visual uh, representations, you know, but also encourage my students to submit for their doctorates, including uh, this kind of visual account of what they're doing. Okay. Any, any other before? I go? I'm, I'm particularly interested in being able to capture those sort of non-text, non-dry academic kinds of things. If teaching is about relationships, there's much more to it than words, and just how one gets away with that in the academy to start with. But you know, just how you capture it because the words aren't. Okay, one of the uh, nicest pieces of work I've ever put on the web, I managed to get it up two weeks ago, and it was of three six-year-olds who were demonstrating with their teacher. I, what I think is just incredible creativity. Uh, they'd taken a model of learning 
from our national president of gifted and uh, talented children, which was called the Task Wheel. It was an action research cycle that Bell Wallace, who was the president, had been working on for 19 years. Okay, so it's being used in a lot of our local schools. And these six-year-olds in this video clip that I've got with their teacher are talking about their use of this action research cycle. <coughs> but then it's limitations. So the teacher is asking, are you satisfied with it? And the six-year-olds literally reconstruct the model until it is a more appropriate way of representing their learning than Bell's task wheel. They have Bell down to the school and Bell had to acknowledge that theirs was a more appropriate model than the one that she had put forward. Now this is six year olds and I've got the videotape and I put that on the web together with the master's unit that the teacher Joy Mounter uh, put into the university for accreditation. Okay so I'll just and you can access that from the master's section. So it, it, it's that um, use of the visual narrative, as you're you saying, that you need to be able to capture, and this is with parental and ethical approvals, um, so that they can actually put on the web. But it, it, it's a beautiful, not, not planned in the sense of something which is scripted, that you, you feel the spontaneity of the children as they're explaining to the teacher how they're improving this model of learning. Um, and the teacher is trying to build in her account the kind of values that she holds about cre literally creating a creative space which is safe for the students to actually inquire. But without the visual, you know, no amount of thing on the text, a piece of paper, can communicate the relational dynamic uh, between the three yeah, pupils, six-year-olds, and the teacher. So it, 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 it's that that I, I can show you where you can access because I think you do need to um, have a look at some of these things, you know, for the validity to be checked. Okay. Is there anything else before I go and just um, I mean, with Deborah's point about the visual, you know, to, just to explore um, what I'm claiming about the ontological value that. Uh, for example, I'm claiming that each one of us here is trying to live a life which matters to you. You want to be productive, you want to live uh, as loving and a productive life as possible. And that sense of the ontology which is flowing through your bodies, through my body, has not been adequately represented in the academy. Okay, so it, it, it's quite a challenge to the normal research university to say that there are different standards of judgment. It is a different epistemology. It's relational and dynamic. And these are not standards that the normal university, you know, the research university, has um, accepted. And they're now just coming in, and I can show you where you can access 20 doctrines that have actually been accepted in the last 10 years, which have got these standards embodied within them. But could I, could I just ask about that? Um, the main principle that I've been trying to raise with colleagues and in my visual narratives is this idea that even in the here and now, I'm aware of what, as I look, your attention. I know that if I then stop and ask, you know, inquiry, do you have anything that you'd like to explore with me? It's likely that one of two you would respond. I would then respond back. We get a responsive and dynamic process going, which would be educational in the sense that I think both of us would be learning something significant. But to explain what I'm doing and what you're doing, I think they would need to bring in this energy I'm feeling. In, a, in the here and now, I'm feeling that flow of what I call life-affirming energy. Now, whether you can sense that or not, I don't know, but through my body and my pleasure, I imagine that you're feeling something of my own expression of those values. But we very rarely bring those into our accounts to explain our influence in the learning of our students. So let, let me just pause there because it is quite a large claim that you know, something fundamental is missing um, from the epistemology of the dominant research university. Can I pause there and just... So, what we're trying to do, even though we've paid and we're busy, we have 